Hello and welcome to the Library Grindhouse. The only ticket you need is your library card. I'm Jesse. <laughs> and I'm Leah. And today we are reviewing the 2014 film Burying the X. And so right off the bat, we have this Fight Club slash Spider-Man Neurons and Lightning title sequence, which I'm just like, this brings back memories yeah. of 14 years before this movie. <laughs> Why are they doing this? <laughs> what, it has no, there's no little to no reason for electricity and neurons. None of this has anything to do with anything that happens in this movie. No, it doesn't. But you know what? I'm psyched that there's a company out there called Scooty Whoop Entertainment. <laughs> I have no idea what that is, but Scooty Whoop for the win. I am excited they were involved with this film. And, uh, and of course, we can't get into this movie without mentioning Anton Yelkin, uh, the late... <sighs> Anton Yelchin, or Yel is it Yelkin or Yelchin? I think it's Yelchin. Yelchin, okay. Sorry for pronouncing that wrong, but yes. Yeah, it's, it's died tragically young. Um, I'm a huge fan of yeah. his um, for all of his works. I have watched Love and Tasha, which is actually on either Canopy or Hoopla. Oh, cool. I believe Canopy. Um, I'll try to so, link to it if it's still there. Yeah, it, and it's a great movie. His parents put it out about his life. Um, you can find out more about him and all of his works. He died when he was like 27 years old and he was able to star in like 58 films within that time unreal, frame. Unreal, unreal. So, films, yes. yeah, phenomenal. And he has never said no to a part. As you can tell, like he plays a bunch of kind of strange roles. I will say that he's. he's oh, he does. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but he was in major franchises like Star Trek Reboot as, yep. as Chekhov. He was in Terminator as Kyle Reese, which I'm just like, you, sir, are no Michael Bean, but. Mm -hmm. It was hard for me to be too mad at it. And he was Odd Thomas from yeah. the beautiful Dean Koontz. Um. <laughs> Which I have not seen, have not seen. Uh, I, less said about Dean Koontz, the better. That is and, on Hoopla as well. And the Fright Night remake, which yes. was kind of fun. And yes. Green Room, both co-starring Imogene Poots, which I'm just like, <laughs> with two female romantic leads in this movie, how is Imogene Poots not cast? <laughs> like, I don't understand. Both Fright Night and Green Room with Anton. I mean, maybe it was for the best. No, I don't know. No poots. No, I don't know. I, I just, <laughs> where's the poots? I, I'm so, I'm so kind of mad about that because they're just, they're like the, I don't know, like Kate Hudson, Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. I mean, just that kind of pairing where you're like, this just kind of works. They had natural chemistry. Something. Yeah. I haven't seen either of those films for a while, but it, I mean, Grand, they're, they're, Two people in very intense situations, so I don't know if there was a lot of time for them to build chemistry. Fright Night more so than Green Room, because Green Room was just wild. But. I was going to say, I need to watch Fright Night again. I watched it when it came out, and I remember, it's been am I enjoying it? Like, I mean, enjoying it enough that I would probably rewatch it again. It's been years. Yeah, I mean, so. Colin Farrell was suave as, the, yeah. as the, the lead vampire guy. Hopefully that's not too much of a spoiler, but anyway, <laughs> and then, yeah, and, and Poots is the... The love interest. And oh, Christopher Mintz Plass was like the friend, the nerdy friend, right? I, I think. That. I think. I can't, but I can't remember. I just remember him being in it. I remember him being in it and being in like a crawl space, and that's about it, or a basement, or something like that. For a Yelchin fan, you don't know, you remember surprising a little about this. One. I know, I do. I think this is before your I, fandom truth. Yeah, told, before, uh, it was before I saw him in Odd Thomas. I was like, yeah, before, just, before it was like, he was in a Coons adaptation. Yeah, exactly. He so did gonna, it really well. I was, I was so nervous about that. I can talk for hours about it, so I'll just... <laughs> I've not read the book. I haven't seen the movie, so probably for the best that we the kind of leave are, it there yeah. for now. Eventually, we'll we'll have to get around to that film and book. I was going to say, it is, it is on Hoopla. So. Yeah, we'll, we'll link to that for sure. <laughs> um, all right, so we, we he wakes up randomly just at, having some kind of nightmare, and so... Apparently, he's getting walked on by both his girlfriend, Evelyn, um, yep. and who's making him buy only vegan food and buy, make him buy a hybrid, sells car by hybrid. Yep. Um, but also his half-brother, who brings women to Anton's place for sex so they don't know where he lives. Yeah. Yeah. Oi! Travis is a special kind of man. His yeah. brother, Travis, is definitely... Half-brother. Half-brother. His half-brother. Um, <laughs> Which is just a running joke. Of I, just like, yeah. It was really funny because while I was watching this, I'm one of eight kids, and most of them are half-siblings. Like, one's sure. one time lethal, but I never think of them that way. So now whenever I'm in an argument, I'm just going to be like, half-sibling. <laughs> <Just laughs> because of this movie, and they're probably going to get really mad, but that's okay. <laughs> no, you have to see this movie to understand the joke. No, it was like, that's a weird, I guess if the person was that just cavalier about crashing my place all the time, I, uh, yeah. I think they truly have a love-hate relationship, like kind of like sure. that, that chummy brother picking on you. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not like that with any of my siblings. I don't have a freeloader sibling that's it, crashing at my yeah. place, so I can't really relate. But I don't know. 
So Max works at Bloody Mary's boutique with the slogan, go to hell. And so he can, and he can cruise over on his Razor scooter, which I'm like, nice. He didn't even need the hybrid. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't he, need engines at all. He's got he Anton getting, power. He's getting his leg workout. Like, yeah, he doesn't you know? skip leg day. Yeah. He, uh, well, depending if he switches legs, I was going to say, hopefully he switches legs. So it's right. not just like one, one massive giant. guy. <laughs> <laughs> small guy. <laughs> So but, apparently he has to greet customers cool morning oh, and has man. to tell them to go to hell when they're done, which <laughs> I, I thought that was hysterical. I would love a place like that. I feel like, <laughs> but I just, I love everyone's, all the customers reactions when he's like, tells them to go to hell yeah. and they're just like, excuse me. And I'm just like, didn't you see where, where you walked into? I, like the well, door says go to hell on like there. on the door. Like, yeah. I'm like, that's their thing. Like, and it's not a store you just walk into you, you're going to have regulars. Yeah, and I'm glad that he mentioned that it was around Halloween time just because I was like, I guess that would be he... the reason customers would be coming in. Yeah, but I was like, how, how, I mean, year round, you do see stores like this and obviously they have to get foot traffic in order to stay open year round or else it'd be another like Trav's Halloween store pop-up. Spear pop Halloween up. or something. Yeah. yeah. But, um, Boutique only open from September to, to whatever. Or something. Yeah, yeah, but I love how even even when he's talking to his girlfriend later on, he's just like, "Well, it's it's the busy season. I'm gonna be there late. It's almost Halloween." Well, that was a while afterwards. I don't it know is. How time passed, but but that's what I mean. I'm, so I think I think this is more like we opened the movie in like August oh, or maybe July because. Okay. Because remember, there's the, the sun setting, rising setting montage. Oh, you're right. And so I, I got See, the, I thought I was that was, like, was just a, a few week? days. I was trying to count the sun, and I'm like, well, that's like a few days. Yeah. But then I get the idea it's been weeks. Yeah. We'll get into that. Yeah. Yes, we'll get yeah. there. So, yeah. So the morning delivery to the shop includes a devil genie that was labeled make any wish or desire yours the evil way which is kind of funny <laughs> which i thought was hysterical i was like any what do you mean the evil way like go about it the evil way if you're like oh i, I mean you're wishing on a satan genie so i wish i was the, skinnier than like a bunch of leeches are gonna suck your like i don't know what I is, mean, it? is it a little monkey's paw well technically kind yeah. of i mean yeah I, but I mean, so basically, he has Evelyn over for some role play and et cetera. Yeah. And so she finds the Satan genie and whatever. And then she basically makes her him promise her that they'll be together always and forever, which starts the Satan genie smoking, smoking? which is BS because this wasn't a wish. They well, weren't like, I wish us to be forever, together forever. Now you wish. But then again, like, it does say the evil way. So I wonder if it just like evilly <laughs> it's because like, oh, it really evil. wasn't a wish, but I'm just going to latch on because I'm so evil. I don't know. Uh, I think it's, I, I, I mean, if this is the mulligan, I have to give the film gonna... that, that basically it was a, it was wish adjacent <laughs> that she was wishing with all her heart. And he was obviously not wishing he with all his heart. He was he, not. He's just kind of like, eh, cause, well, cause I mean, yeah, it's cause at this point they, they move in. And she does the stereotypical make his apartment hers completely. Completely. Ruining his vintage posters by folding them up and shoving them in a drawer. And she I, also dogs on his dream of opening his own store. Yeah. Which she, I can't blame her just because there's already the boutique. I can't imagine this is pulling in all the money and you want to then bifurcate this very limited market. Well, I have a feeling that he's actually trying to like knock his employer out of the business and take over. Not necessarily that store, but he doesn't seem to like his employer. No, he doesn't seem to, th he like knows the things that the employer like is job. doing. I think he likes the horror aspect, like being he around does, all of the stuff. But he, he wants but to be yeah. able to come in late. He wants to be able to have sex at work if he wants to. <laughs> he wants to be able to be his own boss. I get it. He hates. He hates the opening. The, 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 the opening say cool morning and, yeah. and, and, like, and you go to hell. He, he wants to do it his own way. But I don't get that he takes a lot of joy when he's not having to do those things. No, like I don't think so either. And things like that, which that's a huge part of owning a business. But like I that. do feel like in this part of his life that he is actually just not truly himself. He is with a girl who is not really he has, along she has the no same line or anything of what he, he enjoys. Yeah. Yeah. There's not even a little bit of uh, shared experience or yeah. like, like any common really interests, anything like that. Other they, than that, the sex is good, which at least he's honest, I guess. But yeah. He is honest. Like, like she's so hot and the sex is so good. Like why would I do but, drop her? And but it's you like, don't, move somebody in <laughs> like that's like he moved her in like they so then I, he can wake up next to the hotness and have the sex all the time I don't like know. I, it's all i can figure and I, if, if, I, if i moved her in i'd just be asking her about the twilight franchise 
Because that's where she got big, the actress. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I and yeah, she. I, I always wondered why. I wasn't really think Ashley Green is so hot. Like I've only seen her in these movies, and she does not look great as Alice Cullen. Like I, I, she's very charismatic, and she's a fun character in those movies. She's actually one of the better parts, along with no, Charlie. I, but I, I don't. I agree. I, was with just, you. I didn't understand. I saw her in real life. And I'm like, oh, she's beautiful. She's very attractive. She's beautiful. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, I guess that that's kind of a kudos to her because she takes on roles that most people. I sh- I'm stereotypically, so I'm sorry. I'm not trying to offend anyone. But actresses or actors, they kind of pride themselves on their looks and they want to be the best. They want to be like, well, I, I want to play the role oh, of the like most beautiful the woman like, here. Yeah. yeah. And Ashley Green doesn't really do that. She kind of picks roles that mess with because in real life the she can get she her looks. model on. Yeah, she can, she's she can beautiful. Do, she can pick roles that are interesting to her. So um, and take Joe Jonas's virginity. So good for her. <laughs> uh, anyway, the uh, which is what I mainly knew her from other than the Twilight. <laughs> Hearing that little tidbit, I'm like, I will never be able to unknow that. <laughs> Which really sucks. Like, Always going to be the first thing I think of I when should, I see you. I should, I should know this. No one should know this. Like, no one. And I do. <sighs> and it makes me so mad. It makes me so mad. It's going to cloud anything I ever watch her in. Where's like, the same genie so I can get this out of my mind? She, I don't want to lose memories, but that's one I can do without. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, so now that things are shaky, he talks her into going to get ice cream because she's vegan and has none of that and is constantly on about, like, what's in everything. Yeah. And so they, he talks her to go to this horror-themed ice cream shop called Ice Cream. Which is great. Called Ice Cream, where gothic pixie dream girl Alexander Daddario's character Olivia works and owns, question mark? I wasn't sure at she, this point. Uh, yeah. But she says she creates the ice cream herself, which seems like an owner move. Yeah. Like, um, but I still wasn't quite clear on, like, so, like, does she have complete freedom, like, ice cream chef and someone else owns this thing? It. Or It could be, yeah. Because she seems really young to own anything in the L.A. area. But I, uh, I think that was supposed to be, I mean, it's another movie magic thing. Maybe. I mean, it's not I sure mean, she's it's been a gothic pixie dream girl. Yeah. So, of course, she owns this shop <laughs> and can sublet out. The, yeah. But anyway, so Max and Olivia nerd out over the fruit brute flavor um, uh, of ice cream. And Evelyn is having none of it. She does not like it. She, I mean. She does not like for anyone to even look at her, man, I feel but like. No, but I, but I don't understand. There's zero chemistry between him and Olivia. Like, there's yeah, none. They're I, talking fruit brood, but it's like you and me talking about movies. Yeah, like, they, it's like, they were just talking nothing. about something that they enjoyed, and there wasn't any flirtiness. There wasn't no. any, like, undertones or anything. It was That's wild. what I mean. She does not. I think it is her own insecurities and the fact that she knows that she doesn't have anything in common with Max. So then I think it's almost like an internal, she's mad at herself, she's mad at the situation, not necessarily at them, but it overflows and she just storms outside because she's not getting her way. She seems to be a woman that wants to get her way. And when things don't go the way she wants them to, she goes to Pinkberry. (laughs) And Olivia's a lot hotter than her. Anyway, sorry, that's just me. But anyway, I mean, I would have to agree. I mean, that is personally. Yeah, that, that, it, it, yeah. I mean, to have that problem of choosing between Ashley Green and Alexander <laughs> Dario, I'm just like, is it just because Olivia's like she? He has no interest. I it have could, to have this guy. It like, could be. like I've only had guys ever just throw themselves well, at me. Like, and I think with her, she just is latched on because you hear her talk about how her parents died. Her mom's dead. It, well, it's her mean, mom's Evelyn birth- or, yeah, Evelyn, Evelyn, yeah. yeah, it's her mom's birthday today, and she was just trying to do something nice by completely ruining the apartment <laughs> and. All, all I was of trying this to do something stuff. fun, so I can take my mind off of being her birthday, and I'm like, I know. Well, I was just, I actually like, put ouchy. Like that's not something that you say to someone. <laughs> but if you've moved in, he should know that's her mom's birthday. If that's such a big deal to her. True. True. And that, like, and he doesn't, and he, but he, I mean, he's done the, he sold his car, bought the hybrid. He's done all that. He, so you're setting up as a guy who really cares about what she thinks, what she feels, and what is important to her, which means you'd think he would have like brought her flowers or something. Like, I know this is a hard day for you. See, I and, mean, like, I felt like that she never even told him about it. And she was just using that as an excuse for him not to be able to get mad. I guess. Because she seems like she like can work him over and she knows it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know either. And maybe she finally got an idea like, oh my gosh, he has other options. There's another there's a gorgeous woman <laughs> out there who like knows what fruit brood is. And I don't know who what fruit brood is. <laughs> like, I don't know. Maybe she was threatened by that. 
I don't know. I don't know. But at this point, Max realizes that things aren't working out, decides to break up with Evelyn at the dog park. Which is, is the right horrible. move. Which I'm like, she making her think that he got her a puppy. You got a puppy. Wait, it's a rescue, right? And then she's like, it's a rescue, right? And I'm like, <laughs> like wait, I mean, so it's better than text dumping her is making her think that you got her a puppy? I'm like, go rethink the text dumping thing that his, Travis brings up or whatever. Yeah, his brother's trying to tell him to, to just text and, and like split up Which completely. Which I mean, that's totally like a, times. yeah. Yeah, But that's when you're not, living with someone, you can't do that. No. You shouldn't you, do that anyway. That Never text dump. That's yeah, it's not, horrible. No, don't do horrible. that. Horrible. I mean, I've never done it because texting wasn't a thing last time I was in that position, but anyway. I, it's horrible. I've been text dumped before and it's horrible yeah <laughs> don't do that no please. don't um but no but seriously also don't go to a dog park when you're about ready to dump somebody either yeah dumping at the dog park not a good move there's lots of parks yeah it's la yeah like go to go to grizzly park or, or something i don't like, know you live with them have a nice calm talk at your house that way everything's there and you can including the knives so no, i wouldn't do that so that's why <laughs> well, he suggested my thing is a public I'd be like, place why don't could. you go and get your stuff or i'll help you we can divvy up everything i don't know he could have taken her to like an outdoor cafe a vegan outdoor cafe just something not a, not a dog park that was so cruel i was like i don't think he thought of like oh no she's gonna think i got a dog and i think i think he, he kind of realized that oh no i'm in real trouble but he couldn't take it back yeah i think he thought like oh puppies what better place to tell someone than like the happiest place on <laughs> like see look you know, how can you be sad look at all the fun dogs <laughs> yeah and but, yeah and, it, and you think she would want a dog because they're not hypoallergenic i know Unless i she got like a golden doodle like thing which wouldn't be mm, a rescue maybe that would be I a mean, stipulation that she put in after he got the dog in order to make her return it and put him through even more turmoil because i feel like that is what evelyn does in this movie i guess she yeah but so she crosses the street to meet him max sees a bus coming at her and says and does nothing Because I don't know if she did, he just figures that like, she's going to see the bus. Like, hey, you see this bus, right? The bus hits her. She flies a thousand feet yes. after it hits her head, which is kind of wild. But she's still conscious, <laughs> so they can still promise to be together forever. I was going to say, that was sort of a weird scene because, like, she is speaking pretty coherently. Like, just... It cracked her straight in the noggin and sent her flying 50 yeah. feet. Her head is split in two. No, it was it was sort of sad it when she been was like, I, I don't want to die. I don't want to be alone. I was just like... Oh. That poor guy, like Max, he's going to be blaming himself, which he ends up doing. He ends up thinking, like, I called her. I told her to be there. What if I never called her? He looked never at that bus. He saw there. that bus coming and wasn't, bus. and wasn't like, not, like hands were even starting to go yeah. up, like, stop. Like his hands, he was doing nothing. He could have gone into shock, kind of, and been like, uh, uh, I, I think I, I, only, my only excuse is like, again, he's like, she has to see this bus. Like, yeah. You, how could you not see this bus when you're a it, grown up it, crossing the street? It wasn't like it was a very busy street. It was just a typical two way street. Yeah, you, the open road, you know, it's in LA. So it's not like it's. I kind of wish she would have been like seeing him crossing the street and been like, where's the dog? Did you leave the dog in the car? <laughs> of course you left the dog in the yelling. car, something like that. And then yelling at him, like mess, you know, and then she, he gets, she gets hit by yeah. the bus. Because she's, like, so distracted that he doesn't have a dog with him. Like, what's going on? Like, you said, like, I don't know. He didn't say anything. I mean, he said, basically, just, just meet me at the park. Yeah, but yeah. He didn't say he had a dog. He waved, he waved to her. She waved back. She seemed really happy. And she was like, get a lean running. And then smack. So, yes. yeah. But he, after he, like, had five, a five-second look at the bus, looks back at her, and it's just like... Nothing? Nothing. Nothing? I, I don't know. I was a little like, mm, dude. Well, not... maybe that's the reason why he's blamed, why he blames himself, why it hits it so hard. Kind of should. It I should. Mean, should have. I, I don't know. I'm but not at least. Sure. But I don't know what that means. Like, does that mean something that he didn't put his hands up? I feel like he didn't intentionally do that. I think that maybe was movie stuff, like showing the bus, and maybe it wasn't him necessarily looking at it, but his head was turned. So I don't know. He looked right at it. He which did. Just bothers me. I'm just like, why couldn't it have been something where it's like something distracts him? He turns, he sees the bus right before it hits her. Like that. There's just, I think there's better ways to do that unless you were trying to imply that he's like, oh, maybe this will take care of my well, problem. And he was at a dog park. They could have just put like a dog came up and sniffed him or something or like a dog. Or Dr. Ball P hit on his leg. He's like, hey, yeah, and he looks like, up what? and then, uh, yeah. Yeah, they could something have done where something where it's there. like it wouldn't have painted him in a corner of just like, is he a bad guy? I agree. Should with we you. be cool with like, if he winds up being happy at the end, like, I don't, 
we don't like Evelyn, but we don't necessarily want her to die. No, no, absolutely that's where not. I was just kind of confused by that choice. I, I might have been blinded by my Anton, just him being on screen. And okay. Not really. <laughs> Man, so have you seen the fit movie Phantoms? No. So you haven't, okay, so I'm curious to think of like, if this will make you a, the biggest Ben Affleck fan of all time. Oh, I don't like Ben Affleck. I'm not a bit. You haven't seen him in Phantoms. I have a Dean Koontz adaptation. Oh well, there we go. Maybe, maybe I need to. Because as in Jane Silent Bob Strike Back, they say Affleck was the bomb in Phantoms. (laughs) I've I've seen, I've seen all of them, but I, yeah, I've never caught on to the joke. Never caught that joke. That was like like my favorite joke in the movie. Well, I know, but like since I never seen the movie, I was just like, oh, okay, that must be. I mean, make the joke twice. Some funny pop culture thing that he's been in or something. So he's like fourth build in in this. Crappy Dean Koontz adaptation. <laughs> so yeah, so Max watches some very on-the-nose classic horror. Okay, okay, maybe Plan 9 isn't exactly classic per se. Um, <laughs> as the days go by, which I'm not sure how many days, and his half-brother starts by to tell him to go have some fun at a double feature at the New Beverly, which is Quentin Tarantino's movie yeah. theater, which I thought that was a fun little thing to throw in there. And of course, Olivia is at this double feature. Uh, he doesn't of course. see her till after, but to help make Max more redeemable, Olivia has to ask him out to have that fruit brute malted, which sounds gross, by the way. Oh, I think Lose it's- Lose the malt. Why are they calling it malted? I've never heard of it calling it called a malted. Because Joe Dante is a thousand years old. I've never heard anybody call it that. I've always just called it a malt. And yeah, it's a malt. A malted is like you're at the 50s sock hop. Okay. Let's go out for malteds. I was and like, yeah, like, when I they were saying that, I was just like, what? what is it? My- no, it's a, it's a, Okay, boomer. Every time, well, every malt. time, I was gonna say, every time I go like back home, my dad loves cherry malts from Dairy Queen, and I go and pick him up one. And I was just like, "Does it say malted on the sign?" That's not. I have been asking for it wrong. Are they signing? Yeah, I was in like, the malt because I was I'm like, not asking I, for a malted. Are people like judging me? Have I always said this wrong my entire life? I've ordered probably 500 of these. <laughs> you know, the brain works no, in mysterious ways. Because basically, elderly people are. Making <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I don't. I don't know. Uh, or is that I, like a West like Coast, a soda East Coast pop, Yeah, thing? maybe it's a soda or pop sort of thing where it's like some people actually still call it a malted. Yeah. Um, I just, because both of them called it a malted, which I mean. To me, that's like saying but... on carpet carpeting. It's just like, gross to me. Um, or paper towels, paper toweling. Some people do that. What? And I'm just like, why? I've never heard of paper toweling. I need some paper toweling. And I'm just like, Ugh, I just Don't shudder. I just shudder. It's like, yeah, yeah I'm malted. So then Olivia regales. Uh, Max, with how awful her ex was for finding a moral compass. Essentially, he found Jesus and would no longer have sex with her. And she basically got naked and was like, uh, me or Jesus. And I'm just like, I don't understand how she saw it as a total rejection. Other than, I mean, I, I get that, you know, she, obviously you don't believe in God or Jesus or whatever, but that would be a problem. But that's so weird that she just... That she would just dump it. I, I put him on that situation where I'm just like, do you understand? Like, I mean, she just, again, it's a situation where... The, the, the person does not understand the person they're with and isn't yeah. even trying. Like, Well, I feel like this was just supposed to be a parallel between Olivia and Max, where it was like, you know, Max was with Evelyn, who had nothing to do. They, they had no commonalities. And I feel like they were trying to put that with Olivia and her ex, but they went yes, about it the it was wrong really way. Weird. It, was, like, it was very strange. Like, um, why couldn't he, he's L.A., why didn't he join Scientology? And she's like, I don't. <laughs> Believe in Thetans well, or something. Well, you know? like, I, I, I don't know. It's like, why did it have to be found Jesus and want to have sex with me anymore? And I'm just like, I, I thought it, I thought it was kind of strange. I, like it was, it was just, almost like they were like, oh, well. I'm like, so he found a moral compass of just like I don't. I'm no longer willing to do this, and I I find it immoral. Can we talk about it? Well, like, I feel like they were trying to do that whole like pitting people who love horror against like the good people, the good people. Where I, you know what I mean? Where it was like Max <sighs> loves horror and he's just misunderstood. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person. And Evelyn is into recycling and going green and all this stuff, which is like the good stuff. But really, she's not a good person. And then Olivia was, is into like ice cream and into horror films as well. And then her boyfriend is into. Jesus, which is good, but he is not a good person. Like, they were trying to do that. But he wasn't, and they did, but it's like, that doesn't happen. I mean, it, it happened it, quickly, yeah. but it's a sense where she had to know, like, like he's starting to, like, sniff around in that direction, and, like, they had to have talked about it. Like, it doesn't, it's not just, like, an hour later. And if it was, like, that's something where you still, I don't know. If there were other problems in the relationship, that's that's the, another thing. Exactly. But it's one of those things where I'm just like, this is super weird. It I don't know of, what to... 
it kind of was an awkward scene. I try not to think about that too much because I was having the same feelings that you were. So I'm just like, this is... Oh, well, I guess the, uh, yeah. we'll see if these two kids get together or something. So this movie is the end of the caution show about being honest with yourself, your partner, and communicating often and clearly yes. with one another. Um, so <laughs> communication, good. Um, so don't even bother to try to understand the person they're with, which I'm just like, give it a shot. Like, yeah. But I mean, it, I mean, granted, Max, I mean, she was getting no, he was getting no understanding. I was going to say, Evelyn. I think, I like, think Max definitely tried and she was just walking was, all over He him. sold his car and bought a hybrid. Like that's a, that's a big deal. Well, like, and then for someone, I mean, I know movie posters might not be a huge thing to other people, but like he, if he had them all around, they were in pristine condition. He would have had to have talked about them. He's into horror and she just like folds, the, not even rolls, not folds roll into them, them like, up. Yeah. Like all of that stuff, she she does she has not total try. total contempt for what he is enjoys. Well, yeah, I feel like who I mean, he granted, he's is. He's put too much of his identity into this. It's true. To be fair, but like, yeah, it's one like I don't know. It's just one of those things where I am not my DVD collection. You know, it'd be sad to like have to like to sell them all or whatever. But it's one of those things where I don't. If I start to become the things <laughs> I own, that's a problem. Yes, like, yes, yeah. true, true. Uh, so that's it's just one of those things where it's just weird. Um, now. The, the fact another? that her ex-boyfriend joined a, a creative band named the Christian Slaters in Henry Genre would be too much for a person to handle. So I will give Olivia that. I forgot that he he <laughs> left. To, he joined a band, a creative band called the Christian Slaters, which is amazing. <laughs> I forgot about that too. That's but like, it sounds like he went a little too hard, Jesus free. Yeah. In a way that's insufferable for, for her. Yeah, and, definitely. Well, no, like, I mean that's insufferable. <laughs> like, I mean, I I can't handle that. Like, that's that's too much. That's that's like whoa. Oh, pump the brakes there, maybe, buddy. Maybe like, he was just trying to be cheeky and she took it too far. I don't know. It's, I, I mean, I, I I had way more sympathy for Olivia when she brought up the fact that he joined, he created a band called the Christian Slaters. So then I'm like, I get it now. Yeah, I understand. You do you. Because that, no, that sounded like that's insufferable. <laughs> and I, yeah, no. Speaking anyway, of insufferable yeah. though, I would not want to be taken to a graveyard, which is where she takes him afterwards. True, Let yeah. Let me show you someplace. Well, I mean, the fact that she says that Evelyn wouldn't know half the stuff we talk about, or Max says that, like oh, that also that's like true. that he's like we know half stuff we're talking that. about. Like, so this, will this movie explore the deeper connections around what forges connections between people? Like at this point, this is what I'm like. Okay, yeah. this is something this movie should be about because I mean, is it just shared pop cultural interests, or will Max have to change to make things worth Olivia? Even though she seems like she'd go along with anything. Yeah, like I, that's the thing where it's like, okay, so now you're setting up with like, okay, she knows you guys have a common pop cultural touchstone thing going on, but what adjustments will you have to make in each other's lives that you're not even thinking about? And that would have been interesting. But there is an adjustment. I think that's what they were trying to do with Evelyn. But I doubt the movie's going to go there, because, yeah, so <laughs> apparently Olivia loves to walk around the Hollywood Forever Cemetery that famously hosts movie screenings and is where many stars are interred. And, uh-oh, Evelyn was buried there. Which which is so weird. And then, like, they're, like, giggly running around, like, chasing each other. Well, which, do you know what they were doing? Which is fine. They're, they're reenacting a scene from uh, Night of the Living Dead, the original Romero. Oh, I didn't even catch that. They're coming to get you, Barbara. I didn't catch that. I was just yeah. like, oh, they're running around. And I was just like, what? He just they're runs right past cute, his, his... Very sacrilegious thing around dead, yeah. actual dead bodies of reenacting Night of no, the Living Dead. No, I get that. I, I, I just, I didn't even think about that. I was just too flabbergasted by the fact that, like, his girlfriend died. And he, he seems so upset by it within those first however many days it was that we saw the sun setting. Yeah. But he just runs right over her grave and pays no attention. Like, oh. I don't think he ran right over it. It was like he ran around they ran, it. But, but still, right like, near it. like he's, she takes you to this graveyard. You know that that's where your girlfriend is buried and you're still like, Ugh. and then like you would have to know it's around the same section. And he, he just, didn't, but he didn't start instigate that. He went along with it. Well, I know that, but still, he doesn't go along with ev like, he, I don't know. I don't know. I just still would have been like, that's my dead girlfriend. <laughs> but he did want to tell her that, which I'm like, why? I, I kind of respect that he, he, maybe he didn't want to get like sympathy. Yeah. Whatever. Like he didn't want to bring that in right now to like worry that would be like. 
Well, that's what Evelyn did to him all the time, too. She would play that. My, what's my mom's birthday? My dead mom's yeah, birthday. Yeah, and like, I don't know. He he wanted to make sure at least she, he knew that they were not together anymore, but he didn't want to go and the fact she's dead, which is, but that's still a big deal. I'm like, yeah. oh, like when do you, you have to bring that up eventually. Yeah, you have to spill the beans sometime. I, I would rather but just rip the band aid off. Yeah, Evelyn's love of Max and hatred of Olivia is so great that that's the time she chooses to rise to from rise the grave. and break out of and the grave. The other thing, though, is. She was, well, we'll get there. Hold on. Uh, so, yeah. So, they make out in front of Max's apartment, him and Olivia. And um, and she finds Jesus or something and stops it from going any further. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> well she like, said we, she doesn't want to ruin it. Which, but I feel kind of, I feel bad for Olivia during this entire scene. Because, and, and even further, even before that, when she was at the movie theater, I feel like she is throwing herself at Max. Like, blatantly, like, please date me. Please date me. Please pick me. And, yeah. And at first, he's all for it. And then, obviously, Well, but no, but I mean, like, but, but no, but she stops her going any further. I mean, what's happening? Who are these people? I mean, she's made it very clear what she wants. So well, I am very confused. I feel, I feel like I'm it is. I'm very confused. I feel like this is like a, I hate the fact that I'm about ready to say this. I feel like this is like the female mentality when it comes to first starting to date where it's like, I'm showing you that I really want you, but I'm going to pump the brakes because I don't want to give you everything. That way it's not, it definitely isn't like a, a one-time thing. I really do like you. I'm yeah. going to throw myself at you so that you know that I really like you, but I'm going to pump the brakes like, on that. Well, wait, are you just stringing me along? No, trust me. Like, it's all confusing. <laughs> and that's where it's just like, it's just so weird. Like, yeah, you're pumping the brakes because I know I get it that you don't want this to be just a one-time thing. But then it's like, then are you just stringing me along? Like, yeah, no. I, it's just a weird game. I understand and, the, but the, the... In this movie, it's just like, it's it's very clear what they both want is each other. And I don't... It's just it's just really weird to me because she's made it very clear that she does not want she is not abstinence. Yeah, uh, yeah, she, yeah. It's like I, very I know, it's clear. Really, it's really weird. Um, but yeah, she stops herself, and he seems ups, not upset, just like oh man. <laughs> I, I, and she's, he's like okay, cool. Like, yeah, okay. yeah. He's because again, again, he's just like well, he's just you know he's he's Anton Young. He's just pastor's like yeah, whatever. Man. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. He go, man, goes you know. with the flow. Yeah. So then uh, he go, he goes inside. I mean, you had to drag your side. Well, yeah. but Olivia has a really old school car alarm. The old doo -doo. Yeah, like, I'm like, yeah. I've never heard one of those in real life. It's the only <laughs> in the movies car alarm. I'm like, wow, they pulled this out of some weird sound effects bin from like 30 years ago. So then Evelyn shows up and Max's reaction is really weird to me. <laughs> he's still, he's like somehow freaking out, but still calm. But he's also, yeah, way too calm and kind of hateful. Yeah, well, well, I mean, he was just making out with a girl and then someone knocks on his door. He thinks it's her because right. he's like, oh, thank you. And then opens it up and it's his dead girlfriend. He just slams the door. Thank you very much. Uh, I knew you. And then she's like, let me in. Does he like F off or something like that? Oh, no. Or, like, and, then he, yeah, and then he's just like, hold on a second. I'm trying to gather myself, like, type thing. And I'm like, his reaction what? is just like the last thing he ever wanted yeah. to see ever again. And he's I'm just he's like, thinking it's this other girl. And yeah, he ends up being his dead ex who he was about ready to break up with anyway. I could not imagine I, I, I the anxiety. Know. No, of and of course, Evelyn's super horny, and Max is not a necrophiliac, so he talks her into taking a shower first, and then Olivia returns to take him up on sex, which he gently turns down. <laughs> this him. poor guy is having the worst leaves. 10 minutes of his life yeah, right is, now. It's, uh, it's rough for, for poor Max. So Evelyn slips, falls, breaks her neck, but revives in a way that reminds me of Death Becomes Her. Yeah. Because like, she has, like, like, just her she neck like, back into place. Yeah. yeah so she good. can't die. It's physical acting, yeah. Like, and that's right off the bat. I feel like they wanted to show that, like, hey, he can try and kill her, and she's already undead. Like, she, you, you're not getting rid of her. I'm still, yeah, I'm still not clear on the rules. We'll get there. But anyway, thankfully, she forgot to tell vomits and balming fluid on Max, causing him to pass out and get out of having to be amorous with her, which... Uh, yeah, saved by the projectile yeah. embalming fluid vomit. I never thought I'd say those words in my life, but um, there it is. But then that so also, gross. I had the thought this morning that, wait, so she was embalmed. There's no way this green, everything, vegan person would ever, ever have been okay with that. Well, but she was dead and couldn't say anything. And I, since she didn't have any family, I have a feeling I that Anton a was, will. I feel like Anton was probably the one that put it all together. Or but Max, like, I keep saying. But exactly. there's California is one of the few places I think 
that has like actual green burial options. Oh, wow. Well, Where like, and you're only buried like three feet, I think, or something like that. And so well, it's like a special permit kind of thing. And so that that's where like more of the worms and everything else that'll decompose you faster will be. Well, maybe that's like the whole reason. And that would reason. be even better. No, yeah. It's she more shallow. Been. She wasn't embalmed. Like it's she would have been. Where it's a question of just like, is she undead or <laughs> like but that's where it's probably where max literally figured out everything for the funeral and everything right off the top of his head and he wasn't thinking about it because they were not compatible he wouldn't even think of going green for her even though that was her entire life essentially that's what like her job entailed yeah how to, how to make places more and green. i love that she also was the typical romantic comedy i'm a blogger i'm blogging yeah blogging, <laughs> blogging up a storm sweetheart yeah. i'm just like Live green or blog hard, saving the world one blog at a time. Oh my gosh, this is the traditional woman in publishing, you <laughs> yeah. know, the girlfriend who has this weird job that just isn't really a thing, at least not like that. Maybe, I guess, in 2014 well, it still was. But. It's like every single thing that she looks at, like, you should change those light bulbs. It will cut down your carbon footprint. But, 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 like, she, yeah, yeah. No, but just the, the blogging she's, thing. I'm just she's like, a walking I'm meme, blogging. I feel like, when it comes to the blogging, the, the, oh, the green, green movement. It's just, a, uh, oh my gosh, it's insufferable. Yeah, it's, but, uh, it's one, yeah anyway. So, yeah, so, and then we get the best line in the movie. Evelyn, you just rose from the dead. You deserve more than a quickie. Evelyn, you just rose from the dead. You deserve more than a quickie. <laughs> it's the the best, oh, best line in the movie. Up. I, I uh, it doesn't get any better than that. Um, <laughs> and I do love that this, when Travis is, like, spinning his sign. Once you go Norse, you'll have no remorse. That uh, once you go Norse, you'll have no remorse. Oh, yes. <laughs> I, Trust me. I have it in there. I enjoy the explore this sign. They, they, the they do have a lot of really like, good... Like, what business is this for? You sign spinning dressed as a Viking that says explore this shit. I'm just like, what is this? I I do like the little, the little one-liners. The little, like... How can you even afford a garage apartment <laughs> as a sign spinner in L.A.? Like, there's no garage you can rent. For sign spinner money. Unless it was like the owner. The owner had his, the, the owner of the company he's had the garage. He's dressing up different things. Like he's spinning different signs for different businesses. Like maybe, maybe the owner is a sign spinning contractor. I don't know. Contracts his sign spinning employees. It's, it's wild. <laughs> so Max accidentally breaks the Satan genie after warning Travis not to go to the apartment and decides to try the book Straight to Hades, A Guide to Ridding the Unwelcome Undead, which reminds me a little bit of the Beetlejuice book. It doesn't work. No, no. Yeah, so now Evelyn wants to kill him so they can be undead together forever. Which, that went fast. I know, right? Like, Max talks her going to dancing at Club Dead instead, which... But, which, that entire scene was hysterical. I love how everyone's just like, your girlfriend's so goth. <laughs> I'm like, what? But then I'm like, so she has no standards now? Yeah, like, and then like... What is up with her all of a sudden being like, give me another absinthe, give me another one. Yeah, well, I'm hardcore. Like, does she th is she like getting well, a power she... trip at being undead? I don't know, but she's also not making sure the booze is sustainably sourced. Yeah, it's it's literally, I feel like she's like, this guy is trying to be like, oh, you can only have one, you know what I mean? Don't, you can't handle it. And all of a sudden she just has like this machizo of like, oh, I can handle it. Is that because she's undead and like slowly going I evil? I really don't know, but I also love the line, there's a freaking Tim Burton in your living room. I know, I was, was cracking up. Travis so, does have some good lines. I so Max tries to be tender with that one, but she's dead and gross and stinks and has flies. Um, and I love how there's always like one extra fly from then on. Once they introduce the fly, there's always an extra one every time you see her. <laughs> yeah. And um, let's see here. And that, and she wants to kill him, at least with his consent at this point. Yeah. Um, but he tries to gently break up with her and has to walk it back because she will kill him if he pushes it. Yeah. He realizes very quickly. It's a super sticky situation. I do not envy Max, Max's situation whatsoever. No, yeah, and so um, at work, Olivia shows up with a hangover cure of burgers because she saw him outside Club Dead while Evelyn was puking her guts out from drinking way too much absence, which I'm just like, she's undead. This shouldn't affect her in any way. Yeah. I don't know what the rules are. And he, he says later she doesn't sleep, and she obviously slept after drinking I, all that food. Yeah, she said, but maybe she's she was very passed clearly out. asleep. Like, maybe, I don't, I don't know. Maybe she, maybe you can pass out because, I don't know. I don't know. There's, I, there's nothing being metabolized. Yeah. Like, right? Yeah. I don't, what's functional in her? Like, I have no idea. It doesn't make sense. It's the rules are very unclear. <sighs> it's it, other than just like he gets to tenderly like, see, look, he he's not a complete butthead because he's 
and holding we, her like, hair back and, and he's, like he's putting her hand gently on her or something like yeah. when she's asleep or fixing something when she was passed he still, out he ga- well yeah he gave her a kiss on the forehead you can yeah. tell that he still cares but and then, then he's he like, oh, gross. immediately oh, grossed oh, out oh. because it's dead dead flesh uh yeah, so anyway, so Olivia also mentioned she's also thinking about leasing the space next to her ice cream shop, and it would be great for a startup. I mean, geez, this girl isn't perfect at all. Yeah, right? I'm just like, what is... The, I Max don't know. wants to open up his own shop. There's a space right here yeah. with the girl of your dreams. Yeah, I, I don't... I'm. I, yeah, it's just kind of wild. Anyway, <laughs> a phone call from Evelyn interrupts them before they can kiss, and Max doesn't want to say, I love you, since Olivia is there. And then I love that he has to answer the phone. Who dare call Bloody Mary? I know. Just like this story. I mean, it, this story kind of sucks. I mean, I, I would love of, it for the gimmick. I think it's so. But funny. after a while, it would be interminable. And the fact yeah. that he he thinks he's just you can tell he's thought of better ways to do everything that he's doing. Um, and then so basically, he gets the ultimatum: if you want to be with me, then you'll be with me. And it's like I get the idea that Max's life is one of ultimatums from the women in his life, because um, basically he gets the pressure from both. I mean, he, yeah. he, he does have to make a choice. He has to live with the consequences, but it feels like way too much way, pressure way too on much. both. Like, if you want to be with me, you'll be with me. I mean, from Olivia. But then and- again, Olivia doesn't know what's going on. She just hears him say, I love you. She has a feeling it's his ex-girlfriend. He even says, like, you know, she won't leave me alone. He he mentions the ex-girlfriend, doesn't mention the undead part, but right. mentions her. Yeah. And that's when I think she's like, well, you know, you're, I, you're I'm not going to be turned her. down so many times. He turned her down when she came back to the to the space he started to turn her down in front of the yeah. theater. She had to, like, rope him into I mean, that. I think she's just now realizing the fact that she's thrown herself at him She like has been chasing him, like, so like, this many This is all times. her and nothing from yeah. him. Yeah. Very little from him. Very little from him, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I get where she's coming from. I do get where she's coming from. No, it's it's fair. I mean, she did put herself in that situation by constantly throwing herself at a guy who's shown little to no interest. Yeah, and she's um, and she's still inviting him like, hey, I will be here. Yeah, either show up at the Hollywood forever for a Night of Living Dead screening or kiss Olivia goodbye forever. Yeah. And, and she, this sucks. Yeah, and she's literally just like, or it was nice knowing you. Peace out. Right, which I'm just like, man, this just really blows that he <laughs> is in this situation. I, yeah. I get it, but I don't get it. I mean, how does he tell her what's actually going on? Well, how does he even get rid of a Evelyn to begin with? Like, he hasn't... She can't die. He saw her break her neck. She can drink herself silly, but that... She wakes up all sprightly in the morning. And also, if she's trying to feed me pancakes, I am not eating anything that she is feeding me because she's probably trying to poison me. That was my first... Like, I had alarm bells going off when she was cooking him dinner. That completely. And, and she was, like, handing him food. I was like, uh-uh. I was like, did she handle that she's with her poisoning gross, him. like... Hands, well, like, yeah, I love how like thing. she squeezes the orange juice and he's just staring at her, like, <laughs> yeah. So Travis says Max has to rekill Evelyn and give gives him a machete. Max claims Evelyn doesn't sleep, but we saw her again. We saw her sleep passed out after the club. I mean, what are the rules? Yeah. Um. So now he's putting down plastic American Psycho style, and Evelyn thinks he's going to repaint the wall. <laughs> you taught me. <laughs> he's gonna repaint these awful green walls. <laughs> and so then, wait. So she's gonna do yoga. Is there sitar music playing during this yoga I think scene? So. I mean, yikes! Yeah. You might as well play the gong going to China sort yeah. of thing. Like, oh my gosh! And the crunchy sound effects. And are fun, her, though. her knowing yeah. that she's more flexible, and then you just hear like uh, all the crunchiness. Uh. Oh, yeah, it was gnarly. Um, so Max can't go through with it. Um, so he's resolved to have Evelyn just kill him, and that's just yeah, how it is. Just, how it's going to be. He's just going to roll with it because that's. <sighs> Good old Max. So then Travis offers to kill Evelyn for him. I can't imagine this going well. So Travis says two minutes to test the DVD, and now Night of the Living Dead is almost over. So how long has he been at this apartment? Well, yeah. Well, Max puts on uh, risque. He says he has to test it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, he stays there for a while. And Evelyn, for her being so pushy, she tends to let Travis kind of be pushy with her. Like, she doesn't know what to do with, with someone who fights Well, I think she's, she's kind of like, well, but I was kind of like, Oh, are they gonna play it like these two are gonna like get together? Like they have enough of like an animosity, like hate, hate thing where all of a sudden goes to love. Yeah. And I was just like, this could be interesting because Travis is a freak. That's true. And she's super horny. I'm like, huh. Maybe, yeah. That could be that solves the problem. Yeah. And that's kind of a rom-com weird. Shakespearean by way of zombies sort of like thing of like these crazy couples coming together and then you know well, kind of thing. Well my thing is I don't understand the movie that he put on because Max had already told Travis that she's a zombie, right? By this point. Yes, he's she, he's yes. filled her in. 
Well, he he knows that she's dead. He's he went to her funeral, so he knows and that he, she's dead. And he dead. also saw her because he was like the Tim Burton thing. Yeah, yeah. Tim yeah. In the living room, like. So so he knows that she's a zombie, and then he goes over there and plays a whatever a risque tape of people eating brains and zombies. Like, why would you do that? It's like a because, trigger warning. Well he, well, he knew that he Max had that DVD, so he knew he had that in to get into the apartment, like, but I need this movie. Still. And I'm going to test the footage, and you need to figure out how to discreetly get the machete out to, like, Yeah, no, I, I get that, but I mean... And he wasn't thinking about the fact that this would trigger her into... Pick another unfortunately, movie. Yeah, the gore in the DVD gives Evelyn the craving for brains, and she attacks Travis while Louie and Max go to have some fun in her car. Yep. And how is her car not towed? I don't know, way? yeah, it yeah. It's parked in the cemetery. It's in the cemetery, and they wake up in the it's morning, the and it's the only one there. And I'm like, there's no way the organizers of this thing would let them stay all night. Yeah, there's always there's a groundskeeper, no, no especially way. at a place like that. Well, and it's one of those things where, if you're having the screening at the cemetery, which happens historically at this place, like... People need to yeah, leave. Yeah, closing there time, be, like, yeah. there's somebody knocking on the steamed-up windows. Yeah. Like, y'all kids gotta, you can't be here. <laughs> you don't have to go home, y'all, but... Movie magic. Yeah, I don't know. It's It's weird. <laughs> So he comes on to find Travis dead and Evelyn ready to kill Max. He locks in the bathroom, scooters away after 911 hangs up on him. Evelyn which, sees a text from Olivia on Max's phone, which... Which I thought that was weird, too, how he calls 911. He just goes, okay, you're probably not going to believe me. Or, like, right. you just have to listen. And they and just they, hang up on him, which I'm just like, that would not happen. Why wouldn't he come up with a different story, though? Like, hey, there's an intruder in my house. Or something to get them there. I would not... enough of, like, I, I'm scared to see who it is, whatever. Yeah, not just straight up... Uh, nope. You don't call the police and expect them to come over to your house and you're like, hey, my girlfriend, um, I buried her two weeks ago and now she's back and she killed yeah. somebody. She tried to eat him because she's a zombie. And you want the police to show up? And I'm just like, it's not one call. You think they would logged it and be like, we're going to send a cruiser out to like check That's on true. Like, this prank. Yeah, this call, prank, or maybe someone's having like a mental breakdown because and they don't understand the realities that are going on around them. I don't know. So she's a, she's a text so, from Olivia uh, from the yeah, I shop. So. Yeah, so yeah, so and basically she says, she's going to go pay a visit. I love how she goes, "I'm going to eat you up." <laughs> <laughs> that was the text that she sent her angrily, and then. She texts back, naughty boy, and sort of like, oh, okay, well, now well, we they fucked up. All right. Yeah. And so then Max talks to Officer Dick Miller, which is, he's a frequent regular in <laughs> Joe Dante movies, Gremlins, et cetera. So that was fun to see Mr. Miller, RIP. And somehow the police get a call about the malt shop. Yeah. Well, he's there talking to the cop. Like, there's been a, a thing at this Did malt, somebody, this like, ice walk cream past shop. Did somebody, like, and see? But... I, but there's, unless Olivia hit the panic button. But yeah, that's what I mean. Well, I meant like shop floor scene because it was kind of in disarray when he came in there. Like tables were flipped mm -hmm. over and it looked like it was. But how many alarms are you going to have on an ice cream shop in terms of like oh. it set off? Like either Olivia hit a panic button Did or. Did they say an alarm? Well, there's, I, there's been like a call I thought of they a disturbance said, yeah, or something like that. Yeah, that's what I meant. I thought like a customer or somebody like walked past a window and saw heard something, or something or heard a scream. I guess. Yeah. It was I don't just know. really. Weird that they got that call. It's convenient. And so anyway, Max wants to check on there. Olivia. Yeah. <laughs> so for some reason, Evelyn took Olivia to the apartment, and now Max is going to break up for real. And I'm like, about time, dude. Yeah. Like, so Travis is a zombie now and takes out Evelyn, and they bury her in the runner. What do we do now? Bury your ex. Um, Olivia is surprisingly cool with just everything. Well, and I, I love the fact that, like, Olivia is sitting there. She's tied up. So then she starts talking smack to Evelyn, even though Evelyn is, I don't know, an undead zombie that tied her up and overpowered her. Why Destroyed are you her calling, ice cream shop. Yeah, yeah, why are you calling her names and not expecting to get sna or smacked, which happens? Um, and then also, I, I did think it was a cool part that they brought Travis back. I wasn't expecting that. I know, right? I also love the runner jokes. The entire time, like, they are fighting. You kept the runner. Yeah, it's it's you kept the runner. And then yeah. all of a sudden, Max is like, no, we can't fight on the runner. And she goes, oh, yeah. And they scoot over a little bit. Right. I'm like, what is this? It's kind of the big Lebowski, the carpet tied everything yeah. together kind of thing. Yeah, uh, but then it is true. And Olivia is just like, oh, okay, so this is real. Cool. I, I'll fight with you. I'll bury your ex with you. I'll, I, I guess. I'll yeah, talk to I, your now zombie half-brother. Like, what? Yeah, and I'm just like, and then it's like bearing the axe ice cream flavor for Valentine's Day. Yeah, which is, I, I thought that was funny. I was laughing. I guess. Burying, and, B-E-R-R-Y. Like, burying. Gotcha, yes, like yeah. berries, yes. And he has his shop. Yeah. 
they're it's all all together, all working out. Where he says, and have a hell of a have day. Have a hell of a day, which I'm like, that's a better goodbye. <laughs> have a hell of a day. It I is. like it. Max proposes, Olivia says yes, and Travis is sign spinning for them. And as a zombie with all his flesh hanging off, which I guess works for the vibe of their it stores. Yeah, I, they, they definitely thought outside the box and he could still have a job as a zombie. What are they feeding him? I have no idea. I was actually thinking the exact same thing. Unless it's like random girls because he's still trying to be gross and hit on women with as a like, zombie. Oh my gosh, like I thought it would be fun, more better if like, Instead of like killing Evelyn, why in the world didn't he and Evelyn hook up zombies? I, like I thought that could have been a fun, a fun little ending twist to the movie of just like because I feel like Evelyn wouldn't have maybe she I guess used it'd him, be a bridge too far, but use him for a hookup, but she couldn't like use him and lose him because she wouldn't have anywhere to go. And but literally, guess, Max was like her her whole family. She kept saying, "I guess." I don't know. I don't know. I thought, that, I thought I still thought that would have been more of a fun ending than like, oh, she's dead, yeah. dead now, and they have a little mascot. And I thought it would have been a better like romantic comedy if that, there's a zombie couple and a living couple, <laughs> and they somehow these crazy kids have all managed to figure out a way to make it work. I thought that could have been a ever funnier, after. <laughs> funnier thing, like something where it's just like. There's literally no one else who's a zombie like me until now. Yeah, and but then they would have had to change the title because they wouldn't have had to bury his ex. But they did. Uh, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. This this movie I enjoyed um, for its. I want it, to. Simplicity isn't the right word. I enjoyed it for its like humor. It was sort of like kind of a fluffy horror film, I guess. Yeah, well you'd put it? I mean, the biggest problem I have with it is, I mean, I never thought about it while watching the movie pretty much at all or until I saw, like, Dick Miller and then, like, the old film clips is that Joe Dante directed it. I mean, this guy did Piranha, Gremlins, Gremlins 2, The New Batch, uh, Inner Space, Matinee. I mean, these movies all made a huge impression yeah. on me as a kid. I think I even saw Twilight Zone, the movie. I mean, Spielberg's name was on it. I kind of think I knew who John Landis was um, with all the controversy with that. But then Joe Dante had a sequence, and that one was like a crazy, creepy sequence in that movie. I mean, but, and I liked The Howling when I saw it as an adult. He also did The Howling. I mean, just so much stuff. I knew who this guy was even when I was a kid, but the fact that there's like almost none of him in this yeah. movie, like it does not feel like a Joe Dante film. Well, unless maybe his his part of being in the movie were all the nods to like the old timey horror films or the. <sighs> That that could have been. His. I guess, but I, it just there's just none of the Joe Dante flair that I've come to associate with him. Other than like maybe he did it as a favor, or maybe like the people who like because this was like they made a short film and then it's like they got the go ahead to do a feature length based off of this short film. I don't know if they like were like Joe Dante like acolytes and were just like please Mr. Dante please help us make this movie and he's like I see a little bit of me and you kids. So I'll go ahead and do you the do favor of making, directing this movie. And maybe that's how they got some name actors. Cause they're like, Oh, we'd love to work with Joe Dante. Yeah. And I just don't know. I'm just not clear on the whole. It just doesn't feel like a Joe Dante movie. I feel like, really I feel like sucks. I can see the humor being the same. Like I can see the humor in this paralleling the humor in gremlins too. You know what I mean? Sort of that, like... It wasn't as fun as Gremlins 2, though. And it wasn't as dark as Gremlins. Like, no, well, well, I mean, it, it is kind of dark. But, I mean, come on. Phoebe Cates, like, Santa Claus. No, Claude, no, like, I, under I, mean, I understand on. that. But, I mean, it is it is <sighs> kind of dark. I mean, he was going to break up with his girlfriend and she died. He has to kind of deal with that internal pain. And then I she guess. still won't leave him I mean, alone dark, when he has the girl it's of his dreams. Name only, like, it's like, yeah, it's dark in name only. I feel like it's dark in, like, emotional turmoil. Which isn't really but come across dealt on with the it. screen. Like, no, a yeah, that's lot, a problem. So. That's a huge problem. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't know. I wish I liked it better. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I mean, I enjoyed it. it. It was a kind of a cutesy, a cutesy horror film, which, I mean, I guess we've kind of been immersed in, in like horror films for a while. Yeah, so. I mean, if you want more of the lighter touch, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. It'd be worse, yeah. I would think. Be like a, a dipping your toe into the water of horror films. There, there's not really a lot of gore. There is some kind of cool makeup effects when her skin starts to peel off, or like he kisses her. And there's like a yeah, like of gross like, things. Yeah, um, do, so like I don't know. It's there. There are some like kind of gory elements, but not gore. Some just cool makeup effects, I guess. Yeah, like when she goes to eat like Travis's brains, there's like nothing. Yeah, and cuts yeah. Away. Like so you don't. It's like a light film, yeah. Just a light horror film. Yeah, it's it's very not 
traumatic, I guess. <laughs> well, those are all thoughts on Bearing the X, and now here's Clucifer with your clue for the next movie we'll be watching. Clucifer here. Your clue for the next film is She Thinks I'm Invisible, and She's Right. Thanks, Clucifer. Fly Me Grand House, I'm Jesse. And I'm Leah. And we'll see you Friday for our next review episode. Bye.